So we're back working on this Nissan Titan for the rear axle. I brought it in the shop now. I had it parked outside because I ordered a crown and pinion set and bearing kit and uh, a new diff cover. So we're going to go ahead and uh, basically replace all the parts internally in this thing. So here's the crown and pinion kit. It's 4716, I've already confirmed it. Somewhere on here I saw 4716. Yeah, 4716. It's the right ratio. Here's the bearing kit. Please check your numbers. And here is a new differential cover. I ordered all these parts on Monday afternoon and I received them Friday afternoon. One set, one part came from California, one part came from New York, and one part came from Tennessee. That's pretty impressive. Four, four business days out of the States. Thanks to Rock Auto. So mark the location of the U-joint on the flange with a center punch, which I did here. And take the drive shaft off and I tied it up. There's, the U-joints are smooth, so there's no reason to take the drive shaft right out. Uh, we're going to take this pinion yoke off. Looks like one and a quarter. So I stand corrected the nuts, 32 millimeters. Make sure we clean all this rust off of the flanges here before we put it back together again as well. So these axles come out like the old Fords, as far as I can tell. So we've got to remove the four three quarter inch or 19 millimeter nuts and washers. And we'll probably have to use a slide hammer on this to pull it out. So there's a the slide hammer set up to pull the axle shaft out. Parking brake retaining clips are not in the way. Somebody just put parking brake shoes in this thing and you can see where the parking brake shoes have been rubbing up against the back of the wheel studs because the backing plate is rusty and it's probably dented. Right in here it's probably not holding the shoes in as tight as it should. Well that's a secondary issue. Now we're ready to pull the carrier out. Now it's important not to mix the caps up so I've marked the cap on this side put a, a, a center punch mark here and one here as well as well up here and then two on this side the top of the bolt and we're going to loosen off these uh, retainers here and back them off so there's the carrier out I rotated this adjuster up one quarter turn and this one down one quarter turn uh, I don't want to change them too much because that's your backlash and preload on the side bearings and the pinion fell right out I didn't have to tap it through the spacer so we're gonna uh, knock the front bearing out from the back here with a punch and the pinion rear pinion bearing let's have a look at the carrier here I think it needs some dental work the bearings don't look too bad considering but that's typically shock load that does that. Like pulling somebody out of the ditch and with a chain and slacking the chain and hitting it. That doesn't normally happen just because of uh, wear and tear. So there's the back pinion bearing and the front pinion bearing race out. And there's lots of metal in here. So we gotta pressure wash this differential housing out, brake clean it. I might remove these adjusters because there's probably debris on the other side of these adjusters. These are like uh, Chrysler ones with the hex in them, but you can turn them from the side so you don't have to turn them from the end of the housing, but you could probably. 
Well, let's clean this housing up and get, get it back together. There's a front pinion slinger. We'll have to straighten this out again. This goes between the bearing and the, uh, uh, the seal. The seal sits like that. And it just keeps excess oil off of the seal. So it's just like a washer. We'd straighten it out and reuse it. So there's the differential housing cleaned. I pressure washed it with degreaser. And I use this can of degreaser here. And then Varsol and then brake cleans. And I have a long wand here that you can see that goes down the axle tube so you can blow through the tube from one end to the other. And wipe it out with a rag and then re-brake clean it. I took the plug out the bottom here. There's a drain plug in the bottom here that has a magnet on it. We're going to clean that up. Make sure that you can see the metal on it. I had to heat it to get it out. So we're ready to start reassembling here. Put the bearings back in. Put the pinion bearings races in and uh, start cleaning up individual pieces and parts as we go. So there's the front and rear pinion races installed. I used a, a soft steel uh, punch. Make sure there's no chips, anything in there. Now we have to press the pinion bearing off the pinion shaft and reuse the shim underneath here. So we'll get set up in the press. So this is the setup for pushing the bearing off because we need that shim underneath there. We don't need the pinion, we don't need the bearing, but we need that shim. This is what we need, this shim here. The pinion is junk, the bearing is junk, but we need that shim. Otherwise we'd have to go through the trouble of calculating and measuring pinion depth. I find if we reuse the existing shim 99% of the time you're good to go. Because we're not changing the gear ratio or anything. There's a little nick on this shim, so we're going to clean it up. I am going to record the thickness though. So I got the pinion, pinion shim, 38 thou by the way, pinion bearing, and an old wheel bearing race that I'm using as a collar to press the bearing on as it slides over the top of the, this surface in here. So this was just a wheel bearing race from another job that I saved. Well, I am not impressed. I'm putting the pinion in and I noticed it looks a little different. There are 16 teeth on this pinion. There are 14 teeth on this pinion. So somebody's changed the carrier in here. Because this carrier has the markings on it, 4716, but that's 4714. That and the spline is different on the output shaft. This one's finer, it's got 29 splines, this one's got 24 splines. But nevertheless, I got the wrong gear ratio now. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Am I losing my mind? So I was going by this marking, 4716 on the crown gear. But that's definitely not 16 teeth on the pinion gear. So somebody put a used carrier in this thing with the wrong ratio. That's why the teeth fell off of it. Oh my god, now I'm in a real jackpot now. Shit. This is the wrong pinion gear, wrong crown and pinion. Damn it. So as you can see on the old pinion, it says 4714, but on the carrier, crown gear, it says 4716. So I'm looking up the options here now, and this is a 3.357 gear ratio. 3.36 gear ratio includes ring gear, bolts, pinion nut, sleeve, with Dana Super 44, $467 for a crown and pinion. Does it mention something about how many pinion pinion spline count 24? My pinion flange has 29. So it mentions if you put this one on, you got to change the pinion flange as well. Oh brother. So that's definitely what happened. Somebody put a 4716 housing carrier assembly into this differential with a 4714 pinion. Of course it's not going to mesh correctly and the teeth are going to fail, especially if you put it in four-wheel drive. So this gear set is wrong. It's a 4714. Uh, no, this is 4714. This is 4716 because that's what I thought I had. This, this pinion would match that, that crown gear. So, talking with uh, the salvage yard, because I thought this gear ratio was wrong, it turns out this is correct now, but I think what I'm going to do is disassemble this used differential and salvage the crown and pinion and potentially the pinion flange out of it so that we can put this rear end back together. But that'll be tomorrow. I've had enough for one day. I think I need a drink.